This weekend there is a theme in the uh, readings uh, centering around forgiveness and wanted to uh, this weekend maybe uh, specifically to uh, the parish here at Sacred Heart ask for forgiveness uh, in a way not for uh, a sin uh, committed thankfully but just for um, maybe failing a failure on my part to explain uh, in a better way uh, what, what I have been asked to, uh, and how I've been asked to be present to the parish of Sacred Heart. And uh, I, I was thinking, if, if maybe you saw in the criterion as the new round of assignments came out, uh, that I have been assigned as the pastor at Annunciation while continuing uh, as sacramental minister here at Sacred Heart for this coming year. And wanted to just sort of reflect on that as again, I, in looking back, I realized I probably uh, did not do a good job uh, of explaining that when I first got here. And it's one of those things that when you fail to do it sometimes at the beginning and then the year gets rolling and all of a sudden it's been another year. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to do that. Uh, my first three years uh, in, in, um, in ministry, being in a high school and then also as the uh, associate pastor at St. Malachi, uh, but then this year, this past year, obviously a lot of that, that changed and, and was asked to uh, be present to the community in Brazil uh, and then also to help Holy Rosary transition in Sealyville. Uh, through all of the, the closure and, and all of the things that, that have been taking place there, and then also being sacramental minister here, uh, that, that has been, uh, I, I've learned a lot, I'll say that, uh, and, and wanted to maybe expound on that or, or, or share a reflection that maybe should have come uh, a year ago. But if, you know, I think for, for the average person who has been in this parish for 25 years, you know, the, 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 the role of sacramental minister is probably a new one. And, and I've heard, you know, from, from people uh, throughout the year in various ways, you know, Father, you're not around very much. And it seems like maybe you don't like being here or that you are uh, not available and so on and so forth. And I, I just wanted to basically say before, before diving in that being a sacramental minister, I recognize uh, that that is a, a challenge for the parish and that that's hard for the parish. But I also just wanted to let you know and, and, and share with you that it's also hard for me. And it is a difficult thing for me. I wish I could be uh, more present. And I, I don't think anybody in the seminary, uh, if you ask a, a priest, you know, well, what's the ideal situation? I doubt any, any priest, uh, whether you know, any seminarian or whatever, would just say, well, the ideal situation is that I drive all over uh, Terre Haute and uh, Brazil, or you know, that I cover this large geographical area uh, and, and not really able to ever really be present uh, very long in one place on the weekend. Uh, no, no priest that I know of likes that, and, and, uh, and it certainly wasn't really what I envisioned when I entered the seminary. but. It's not like this is a new thing, uh, this, this role of sacramental minister. When I think about, uh, you know, I'm sure most of you are aware of uh, Bishop Brute, our first bishop. And Archbishop Ekline really worked very hard when he was the archbishop to try to have Bishop Brute canonized. And I know that that process is still going on. But when you read the account of Bishop Brute, there were three priests that covered Indiana and Illinois, uh, the diocese, and they would basically ride nonstop. Uh, just going from one place to the next, providing the sacraments. And they were never able to really linger very long because there was always the next place that they had to get. And some churches, you know, didn't get the sacraments for months at a time. But these three priests did everything that they could to get to all of the parishes. And I'm sure that um, back in, in, in those times, many people would have said to Bishop Rute or the other priests, um, why don't you stay? You know, we would, we would love to have you to stay longer, to stay for dinner, to do the, you know, and Bishop Rute simply had to continue on the circuit, so to speak. And again, that is kind of the, what, what we're seeing now is being asked of priests and parishes. And it's not easy for either. 
And I know that it, it, it's, it's hard, uh, as it was, I'm sure, for Bishop Rute uh, back then. Uh, it's, it's hard to, have, to recognize that, you know, people think that, that you don't like being there. Um, but I just wanted to say and, and assure you up front that that's not the case uh, in any way. Uh, and, and that's not at all um, by design, it, by my own choosing. And it's something that, that's very, dif uh, very difficult for me as well to, to know that uh, there are more opportunities to be present, but that sometimes it's just not the time. Just so that you know kind of what my schedule on the weekends is like, um, at Mass, we have Mass on Saturday night at 4.30 in Brazil. And then I'm able to stand around and greet the people after Mass for 10 or 15 minutes and then hop in the car and come here. And usually after confessions and so forth, uh, I get back to Brazil around 8, 8.30 at night. And then on Saturday, Sunday morning, it's the same thing, Mass at 8.30, 10 or 15 minutes after Mass to greet the people, maybe stuff a donut down my face, uh, and then hop in the car and run over here for Mass. Usually after Mass is on Sunday, uh, the, the two weekends a month, immediately following this Mass, I go back to Brazil uh, to give communion to all of our shut-ins and nursing homes. And they have a really tight window because of when they eat their meals and so forth and when they're able and awake. And then on the, um, another Sunday every month at Brazil, I have to run back because we have benediction following adoration uh, at 12.30. And so uh, it's a challenge. And I, and I, and I know that, that people in Brazil are oftentimes like, why are you leaving? Why can't you, just, don't you like us? You know, can't you stick around? And it's, no, I have to go. And it's the same, it, just on a human level, you know, as a priest, it would be great, I think ideal, to be able to just be present to one community, to minister to that community, to provide the sacraments, to also then be able to, to hang out more, to relax more, to be present more outside of the Mass, outside of the sacraments. But nonetheless, that's the situation and that's the task that we've been asked to uh, fulfill. And so... I just wanted to say that if you ever wonder, does he not like us? Uh, why isn't he like Monsignor Voles or why isn't he like Father Giannini, uh, who were our pastors here? Why is he always leaving? Um, I, I wish it weren't the case. And, I, and I, I feel your pain and I know that it's hard at times for you to simply go from having a pastor all these years to now having a sacramental minister. And it's also hard for me. And, and I feel your pain, and I'm sorry that you are in that, and I recognize that. And I just wanted you to know that I'm praying for you in that. And I just ask for your prayers uh, as well as we try to figure this out. You know, we try to work together and figure out what this looks like. It's not the first time in the church's history in the United States that we've had this. There's also lots of other parishes that have gone from having a pastor for many generations to having a sacramental minister now throughout the archdiocese. Uh, obviously, we just heard again this week that some parishes being closed in the Batesville Deanery. Um, some people last night were saying, you know, Father, does this mean because you're the sacramental minister that we're going to close? Absolutely not. It doesn't mean anything like that. It, uh, again, as I said, lots of other parishes have, have transitioned to this model of sacramental minister. Uh, and I just wanted to, to address that. Um, I think that I take strength from, and I know lots of other priests take strength from the Gospels and from Christ, who basically rode the circuit himself. And there was a spot in the Gospels where, um, uh, from today's Gospel, where we read, you know, it says, Afterward, Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. I would imagine that most people in those towns that Jesus visited would, say to, would have said to Jesus, why don't you stay? Why don't you hang out? Why don't you spend some time with us? Uh, why don't you, uh, you know, stay here and just make this your, 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 your home, your residence? And, uh, but Jesus said, I got to go. I've got to go to the next town, to the next village to preach, to provide the sacraments, to proclaim the word of God. And so that is, I think, the task that lots of priests are being asked to fulfill today in our church as well. And so simply wanted to address that, to apologize for maybe not recognizing that that would be a challenge and not addressing it sooner, and also to simply say that I, I'm praying for you, 
I keep you in my prayers and I just ask that you do the same. And I know that this year we'll continue to grow closer to Christ, to grow closer to uh, the Eucharist, and also to uh, draw closer as a community. And we hold one another up in prayer.